Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. Yeah. We've got a uh, a really interesting one lined up today, folks. Yeah, this one's right up my alley. Plumbing. Plumbing in 2025. You got it. The future. We asked you guys to send in some, well, anything you could find. Articles, reports, studies, anything about the future of plumbing in the U.S., you know, 2025. Looking specifically at 2025, yeah. And wow. You guys delivered. We got a mountain of research to dig through. We did. Uh, so is plumbing like the wave of the future or is it going down the drain? Million dollar question. <laughs> right. So let's just dive right in. I was going through everything. And one of the first things that jumped out at me actually was this projection. Eco-friendly plumbing by 2025 multi-billion dollar market. Yeah. The growth potential in that sector is uh, really something else. Huge. But why? Why is that? I think what we're seeing is like a bunch of different things all happening at the same time. You've got growing environmental concerns, obviously technology that's changing faster than ever. Yep. You know, just like how society sees things. It's all shifting and it's all, well, it's changing what it even means to be a plumber these days, or at least what it's going to mean in just a few years. Makes you think, right? Because plumbing, I mean, it's not really something you usually think of as like cutting edge. Yeah. Not usually the first thing that comes to mind. Pipes and wrenches, right? Exactly. Mm. But then I saw this one report called it an era of unprecedented growth in the plumbing industry. And I was like, really? Yeah, it does kind of sneak up on you. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, it makes sense, right? I mean, think about it. Population's going up, which means more people need water, more houses need plumbing. Then you've got all those older systems that need fixing, replacing. Right, yeah. And then on top of all that, you've got climate change, water scarcity becoming more and more of a reality. So Yeah, you can't ignore that anymore. Plumbing is suddenly at the center of this really crucial conversation. And speaking of crucial, sustainability. Almost every single article, report, everything mentions sustainability. It's almost like it's this whole new frontier within plumbing. Oh, absolutely. It's not even an option anymore, really. There's a huge push for eco-friendly plumbing solutions. Yeah. And it's coming from everywhere. It's consumers, it's regulations. Right. And speaking of regulations, I feel like we need to talk about California's Title 24 building codes. That came up a lot in what we were reading. Oh, yeah. Title 24. It's kind of a big deal. It seemed like a big deal. So what is it? Well, basically, it's this set of rules, and it's some of the strictest in the whole country when it comes to energy and water efficiency in buildings. Wow. Okay. So if you're in California, you're pretty much required to have things like low flow toilets and faucets. Right. Yeah. Even things like gray water recycling systems. Wow. I was going to ask about that. So that's becoming more common. Definitely. And they're even requiring advanced leak detection systems now, especially in new construction, but even in big renovations. That's intense. California tends to set the trends for the rest of us, you know? I was just going to ask that. So California is kind of leading the way right. and then everyone else follows. In a lot of ways, yeah, for sure. But, and this is interesting, I think, it's not just about the regulations themselves. Okay. Other states, even if they're not quite as strict as California, they're starting to offer incentives for people to make these changes, you know, to install things like rainwater harvesting systems, energy efficient appliances, stuff like that, even in places where water isn't super scarce. I guess, I mean, saving water saves money too, right? Exactly. I mean, I know it does for the homeowner, but yeah. I guess if you're a city, a state, using less water is good for everyone. It's good for everyone. It's good for the environment. Right, right. It just makes sense long term. Totally. Okay. So we've talked about like the, the regulations, but there's this one chart, and I think you're going to like this about consumer demand for eco-friendly plumbing. Okay, yeah, let's hear it. And it is through the roof. I'm not surprised. People are definitely becoming more aware of their environmental impact. It's huge. People really care about this stuff. Yeah, we're definitely seeing a big shift. It's not just about fixing what's broken anymore. It's about actively looking for ways to be more eco-friendly, especially when it comes to water. People are ready to invest in it, upgrade their plumbing systems. They want to put their money where their values are. Yeah, I can get behind that. Uh -huh. And when we're talking about eco-friendly upgrades, one report predicted that by 2025, the most popular upgrade is going to be. Let me guess. Low flow fixtures. Low flow fixtures. It had to be. It's huge. Yeah. Like 35% of people are projected to make that upgrade by 2025. Wow. Yeah, those low flow shower heads are here to stay. I guess so. But it's not just like the toilets and the shower heads, right? No, no, it goes way beyond that. Some of this stuff is like next level. Right. Like straight out of a sci fi movie. Exactly. Like it what? Give me an example. 
smart leak detection systems. Those yeah. are becoming incredibly popular. Okay, tell me more about those because that sounds really cool. So basically they use all these sensors to detect leaks, but we're talking like really early detection before it even becomes a problem you can see. Oh, wow. And the best part, it sends an alert right to your phone. So no more coming home to like a flooded basement because of some hidden leak you didn't even know about. Okay, see, that's peace of mind right there. I like <laughs> that. But are there even enough plumbers to like handle all this new technology? Ah, uh, there's the real question. That skills gap is a big concern. You've got experienced plumbers retiring and we need new people to, you know, step in and fill those roles. So how do we get more people excited about a career in plumbing? Because, I mean, honestly, right now it sounds kind of cool. It does. So, okay, we've got all this cool tech, all these eco-friendly options. It seems like good news for plumbers. Right. More work to do. It is, but it's not the same everywhere. That's one of the things I thought was so interesting, looking at all these different reports. We talk about the future of plumbing, but it really depends on where you are. Like, California is kind of its own thing. Right, right. So if California is leading the way with water conservation, what's happening in other parts of the U.S.? Well, the Northeast is interesting. They're dealing with a whole different set of challenges. Okay. Their big focus. Upgrading aging infrastructure. Think about those older cities, you know, like New York, Boston. Right. Lots of old buildings. Exactly. Tons of buildings with plumbing systems that are, well, let's just say they've seen better days. Ancient history, practically. Pretty much. So for them, it's less about like brand new construction and more about renovating, repairing, you know, bringing all those old systems up to current standards. So it's less about being fancy and more about just making sure things work. Well, it is about making sure things work, but it's also about safety, efficiency. I mean, these systems were built when, like, people use way less water. Well, well that's a good point. Times have changed. They really have. So you've got about 20% of the demand coming from that need to just, like, modernize everything in the Northeast. Sustainability is part of it, for sure, but it's not the driving force in the same way it is in, like, California. Interesting. So different needs, different priorities. Okay, what about other parts of the country? What's going on there? The Midwest is booming when it comes to new houses, especially in states like, say, Illinois, Ohio. Okay, so new construction. That's got to keep plumbers busy. It does. But here's the thing. These aren't your grandma's houses. You know, we're not talking basic plumbing here. Ooh, you've got my attention. What are we talking about? Smart home technology. That's mm. where it's at. And the Midwest is really embracing it. Smart homes. Okay, so we're talking like, what, smart water meters, leak detection? All of that. You've got your smart water meter so you can track your usage, see where you can save. You've got your leak detection systems, of course. And then there are the energy efficient water heaters, all the bells and whistles, basically. Wow. That's a lot to keep track of. It sounds like plumbers in the Midwest better brush up on their tech skills along with, you know, the actual plumbing. Oh, absolutely. Being tech savvy is non-negotiable these days no matter where you are. But you're right. The Midwest is really on the cutting edge when it comes to that stuff. Now down in the Southeast, it's a whole different story. Yeah, hurricanes, right. I was going to say, I bet that keeps plumbers down there pretty busy. You said it. Florida, Georgia, those guys, they're all about emergency plumbing services, flood prevention, all that. Makes sense. It's less about the fancy upgrades and more about making sure that when those hurricanes hit, your house can handle it. Practicality over luxury. Exactly. And then, of course, you've got the Pacific Northwest. Right. Always ahead of the curve, environmentally speaking. What are they up to? Oh, they're like the eco-conscious trendsetters. They embrace everything early on, low flow everything, gray water systems. They even love their solar powered water heaters. Wow. So it's like each region has its own like plumbing personality almost. Right. It's fascinating. But no matter where you are, one thing is clear. Plumbers who want to stay ahead of the game, they need to be adaptable. Makes sense. You've got to be ready for anything. And that's what makes this whole conversation so relevant, you know? You mean like in terms of figuring out where the opportunities are going to be? Yes. And how to get ready for them. Yeah. This isn't just about fixing a leaky faucet anymore. Right. It's about understanding how these systems work, getting comfortable with all the new technology. And probably explaining to your clients too, right? Exactly. You have to be a trusted advisor, especially now when people are so much more aware of the environmental impact of, well, everything. It's like the plumber used to just fix the leak, and now they're like part of the solution. That's a great way to put it. Plumbers are becoming really important in creating a more sustainable future, and that means changing how they think about their work, too. Okay, so how can plumbers get ready for this? 
What can they do to future-proof their business, especially with 2025 right around the corner? Every single report we looked at stressed the same thing. Education, training, never stop learning. The days of just like knowing how to do a few basic things, those are over. Wow, but that Plumbers need to be constantly learning new technologies, new systems, especially when it comes to like water conservation, smart home integration. Right, because if some homeowner in California wants a state-of-the-art gray water system, they need to be able to find somebody who can actually install it. Exactly. And it's not even just about like knowing how to physically install it. It's about understanding why it works, how it benefits the homeowner. So you can explain it to them. Exactly. Plumbers are becoming educators, advisors. They're not just fixing things. They're guiding their clients towards the best solutions. Okay. So it's a mix of like technical skills and people skills. Absolutely. And honestly, I think that's a good thing. It makes the job more interesting, more engaging. I can see that. I mean, yeah. how many times have you had a plumber fix something and just like leave and you're like, wait, what did you even do? Oh, too many times. But now with all these eco-friendly solutions, there's a real chance for plumbers to connect with their clients, to educate them, talk about water conservation, explain why these upgrades are worth it in the long run. It's like you said before, it's about changing how people view plumbing altogether. Exactly. It's not just a necessary evil anymore. It's a vital part of creating a more sustainable future. Love that. Okay, so we've got education, we've got communication. Anything else plumbers should be thinking about as we head into 2025? This one might seem obvious, but you'd be surprised how many articles mentioned it. Plumbers need to embrace technology, not just in the work they do, but in how they run their businesses too. Okay, so like... Ditch the old appointment book, get an app. Exactly. There are so many tools out there now, apps, software, all designed to help plumbers streamline their operations. Scheduling, invoicing, even just keeping track of customer information. It's kind of funny when you think about it. You picture a plumber with their wrench, not a computer. I know, right? <laughs> but technology can benefit any industry, and plumbing is no exception. Makes you wonder what took so long. Right, but the point is, things are changing. And plumbers who embrace those changes, those are the ones who are going to thrive. It's all about staying ahead of the curve. Yeah. And it seems like there's more and more opportunity for plumbers to specialize, to really like niche down, you know? Oh, absolutely. And that's a good thing. We talked about the different regions, but even within those regions, there's so much room for specialization. Maybe you become the go-to person for gray water systems in your city, or you focus on retrofitting those old historic homes with those modern eco-friendly plumbing systems. So it's about finding that thing, that passion within plumbing and becoming the best at it. Exactly. Don't just be a plumber, be the plumber, the gray water guru, the smart home plumbing specialist. I love it. You've got to own that niche. You do. So, yeah, to recap, it seems like the future of plumbing really hinges on being adaptable, on committing to learning and growing. And being okay with technology. Yes. And not being afraid to really focus, to become an expert in something specific. This has been amazing. Okay, so we've talked about the tech, the sustainability, the specialization, anything else we need to cover. There's one more piece of the puzzle. The workforce. Who's becoming a plumber these days? And what do they care about? The workforce. You mean like who's actually choosing plumbing as a career these days? Yeah. We talked about like more young people, more women joining the trades, which is amazing, but it's even bigger than that. This new generation, they're bringing a whole new energy to the industry. And I think that's a really good thing. So it's not just about like learning the technical stuff anymore. What else is important to them? Well, for one thing, they're not just looking for a job. They're looking for a career. Okay, yeah, I guess you should. They want to be able to learn and grow, maybe even like move up in a company someday. They also, and this came up a lot, they really value work-life balance. Work-life balance. I feel like everyone's talking about that these days. It's a big deal, especially for this younger generation. And the other thing is they expect technology to be a part of their work life, just like it is in their personal lives. Well, yeah, I mean, they grew up with smartphones, the Internet, all that. Mm -hmm. It would be weird if they didn't expect that at work, too, right? Right. It's just normal for them. And this ties back to what we were talking about before, you know, plumbers becoming more like sustainability consultants. OK, I see the connection. This generation, they care about making a difference. They want to do work that aligns with their values and plumbing. It fits right in. It's all about water conservation, eco-friendly solutions. It's like you said, it's not just about fixing leaky faucets anymore. It's about saving the planet. 
Yeah. But how do you actually attract these plumbers? How do you convince them to choose plumbing as their career? That's the million dollar question. And I think the answer is you have to offer them more than just a paycheck. You have to create a workplace that they actually want to be a part of. Okay. So what does that look like? Give me the specifics. Training. That's huge. Okay. Makes sense. Learning the newest tech, all that. Exactly. Give them opportunities to learn new skills, to specialize. The other big one, flexible work arrangement. Okay. So like being able to set your own hours, maybe work from home sometimes. Yeah. Things like that can make a big difference. And of course, this goes without saying, but you have to actually walk the walk when it comes to sustainability. You can't just talk about it. You have to live it. Show them they're serious about it. Exactly. Wow. We've covered so much today. Eco-friendly plumbing, those regional differences, the technology, now this whole new generation of plumbers. It's a lot to take in. But the main takeaway, I think, is that plumbing is changing. It's evolving. And honestly, I think it's a really exciting time to be a part of this industry. It does sound kind of cool. Like, mm. it's not your grandpa's plumbing anymore, you know? Yeah, right. And for anyone listening who's thinking about a career in plumbing, or maybe you're already a plumber and you just want to know how to stay ahead of the curve, the message is clear. Embrace change. Never stop learning. And remember that plumbing is about so much more than just pipes and wrenches. It's about building a better future. I like that. Me too. Well, on that note, thank you so much for joining us for this deep dive into the future of plumbing. I learned a ton. Me too. It's been fun. And for everyone listening, thank you for being here. We'll be back soon with another deep dive into something new. Until then, stay curious.